What's going on, y'all? So lit. So we are here for the Real Housewives of Potomac season three, episode eight. That's entertainment, okay? And it continues where I left off last week. Monique is still in her feelings about the shit that Ashley was saying. Um, you know, putting these rumors out, not being really concerned about her, but just saying a whole bunch of stuff about, you know, trying to make stuff worse than it seemed. Okay, and then Karen trying to explain this divorce thing that happened. She basically said that it happened years ago, but then when she went and talked to, you know, either Giselle, Giselle said she made it sound as if she was talking to like now. So maybe Karen got her dates mixed up and she trying to save face or whatever. Who knows? Okay. It's Karen. And then she was telling them about her scent, um, thing that she's going to be doing her fragrance. And of course, Giselle has to throw shots about, well, I don't know, you know, um, what type of job she ever had besides Taco Bell. Okay, so it is what it is because then they get into the whole thing of maybe this divorce stuff is why she kind of snapped off on Robin, you know, because Robin had said, I'm college educated. You know, it's a lot of some, um, dumb college educated people. Okay, just let that know. But, you know, she wasn't really trying to sweat that and... It was like either Ray trying to get the divorce now to protect her from the IRS or whatever that shit goes. It is what it is. At this point, like I said, Monique is still in her feelings. They all about to get ready to get into the hot tub and have some fun. And I just like this whole moment right here, you know, where everybody come down. They was going to try to find um, Karen's rig and Ashley comes out. Um, Ashley comes out dressed as Curran cougar you know and imitating karen and everybody was just busting up and having a good time in the hot tub and you know that's how they ended the last night so everybody was getting along for now so everybody is back off of vacation we got candace and chris they going out having a little lunch date or whatever and candace is sharing her version of things that happened on the trip and then they get into this thing about monique and her drinking and being in an accident and then you have ashley sitting there telling michael her version of the trip about monique being drunk and drinking a whole bottle of wine and basically trying to make it seem as if monique is an alcoholic and oh she got so much stuff going on maybe she's doing all this to so the pain and all that shit bitch monique is over there with her husband chris you know they cooking together and saying how hurt she is about the fact that she don't feel like them girls really her friends because especially ashley because you know she felt she was getting close to ashley and for ashley to go around saying this um you know oh she had this many drinks and all this stuff and all this stuff if you felt concerned about her, you should have came to her instead of just saying, saying it to this person, that person, that person. And that is what fucks up shit with Ashley, okay? She pisses me off on that. And what makes me even more mad is the fact that she's trying to make it seem like this girl has a problem. Once you put certain stuff out there, that can ruin a person's reputation because people will start thinking about that negative before they think about the positive. And that is all people are thinking about. That's what they're talking about. And I was so here for Candace for sitting there talking to Chris and Chris saying, you know, okay, so what? She had a bottle of wine. She was on vacation. That don't mean that she an alcoholic or whatever. Because, bitch, like I told y'all once before, when I go to fucking Philly, every time I go out for vacation, 9 out of 10, I'm going to be drunk, you know, at least one day. But I'm going to be having a drink, drinking throughout the whole time, okay? I'm on vacation. I ain't got no responsibilities like that. On vacation, I'm supposed to be having fun, Okay. So the fuck what if she had a bottle of wine? She's on vacation. She ain't got to be responsible for nobody but herself. Her husband at home with the kids, okay? And she is, this is her downtime. She is relaxing. She is chilling. What's the problem? Okay, Ashley, you could have did the same thing. Ain't nobody going to say nothing about you. But because she got into this accident and you want to put 20 on 10, shout out to Rox, about how many drinks she had or, you know, she could have, could not been drunk. Either way, who's to say? Monique knows the fucking truth, but for you to go around just spreading it, that's that's not what a friend does. And I understand why Monique is upset about that whole thing. Um, Like Chris said, he feel like Ashley trying to be messy, bitch. That's what it was. And so at that point, we get this whole scene with Giselle being in her feelings because she don't know whether or not, first of all, she was practicing some stuff, um, dealing with her book and trying to act like she really in the preaching and stuff whatever that was stupid but you know she gets on the FaceTime with um Robin and they talking about her relationship and how Sherman hasn't spoken to her in 29 hours you know 
And she said she was once with somebody who was good at communicating, but now she's with somebody like, I can't read your mind. She sent him this People article about them being together, and she don't know if that spooked them off or whatever. But I'm like, damn, y'all been together for a year and a half or so or whatever. Sometimes you have little bumps in the road. Don't make too much of it before you make a small situation a big one, and then y'all gonna break up. I really don't care about Giselle in this relationship. So Karen goes over to talk to Matt so she can, um, you know, put together this whole event to kind of test the waters about her little sin thing. She wants the public opinion. She wants her friends to be there. You know, this is a money-making opportunity for her. She gives her little backstory about where she's from and how, you know, I think it's South Carolina, North Carolina. They never really had stuff like that. And she get her inspiration from her mom and, you know, shit like that. So that's what's happening, okay? Y'all know I'm trying to get through this because the BMAs is on... And, um, I just want to see Janet and this is literally a filler episode. So that's why it might be a short review, but it is what it is. Um, Candace sent down with her mom. They go to the Willard Hotel. This is where they plan on having, I guess, the reception, um, to the reception to the wedding. I don't know if the wedding's going to be there too, but they're going back and forth over the things that they want for her wedding. But at this point, you know, I get it. Candace trying to put her foot down. She wants um certain things and she want to tell her mama, this is my wedding. The mama is like, well, bitch, I'm paying for it. So it's both our weddings. That's how the mama is acting. And at this point in time, I get it. But Candace should have nipped this shit in the bud a long time ago. So I guess your mama is not about to change. Your mama is still going to be your mama that's going to be overbearing. She ain't about to change that anytime soon. She wants certain stuff, but like a wall full of flowers and all this shit. And then the party planners, the wedding planner is telling her, you know, if you get all of that, it's going to go over budget because most of the money for the budget going to the food. You got 250 guests. And so, you know, the mom was like, I'm putting forth $100,000. Your daddy's putting forth $20,000. If you want something else to be done, you're going to have to ask him for some more money. And, you know, Candace, it's a touchy subject with her father because the father left when she was a baby. and Or I should say they got divorced when she was a baby. Um, and the mama kind of implied that, you know, to be prepared for shit to happen in the marriage. And Candace was like, so what you trying to say? That, you know, be prepared that Chris might cheat on me or whatever. I just want you to let me run my marriage the way that I want to run my marriage. And that's, you know, she had to say what she had to say. Don't put your shit that happened to you over 20 years ago when I wasn't, I was a child and didn't even know what was happening onto my marriage. And, you know, the mama does need to step back. She really do. But like I said, Candace, you allowed this shit to go on for so long. So it's going to be hard for her to step back after all this time. Ashley goes over to her mama house to help her and see if she's coming along with the packing and stuff. And surprisingly, she said that the deadbeat helped with the heavy stuff. Okay, fine. So she was like, you know what? I come to this conclusion that a whole bunch of stuff been a hindrance in my life. And um, Ashley was like, who? What? She was like, my family. And then Ashley looking like, what the hell? It started talking about her moving about the dude. Then she tried to flip it on Ashley and say... The stuff with Michael, Michael was doing all this stuff and you falling for it and, you know, he won't call me, he won't do this. And Ashley was like, because he told you, he set up this whole thing for you to be, um, you know, to support you as long as you didn't bring this nigga with you. And yet you do. And so you disrespect him by going against what he uh, asked you not to do. And so then you try to flip it. She manipulated the fuck out this situation, trying to get the heat off of her about how she fucked up and put it on Ashley and try to make it seem like Michael was controlling. Michael was doing a whole bunch of shit. Um, you know, basically trying to make it seem like I, I, Ashley is all about Michael, 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 Michael. And I said, how the fuck you going to think that when your ass, the one who left, your children and neglected them to be raised by her grandparents their grandparents because of a fucking man relationship after relationship after relationship her mother is so fucking manipulative and Ashley I can see their dynamics just from this one scene that she's been doing this for years and years and years and Ashley has been falling for it Ashley has finally gotten somebody in her life that's telling her you have to put your foot down with your mother yes you love your mother but your mother is trying to run the fuck over you with her goddamn games okay and that's exactly what it was and I said Ashley if you fall for this bullshit you stupider than I think you are okay so you her mama is a fucking mess okay I know a manipulator when I see one because 
may he rest his peace and, and, and God rest his soul. My uncle was like that and my aunt was the same fucking way. Both of them passed away, but they was the same fucking way. Manipulate the shit out of people. And I just be sitting back like, y'all really falling for this stuff? That's exactly what I'm seeing. So, you know, all the girls get there for, um, you know, Karen's little sniff event, scent sniffing event or whatever. And, um, they got the lady who's supposed to make the perfume. She's there. Everybody's just sitting in there. Um, you know, Monique is like a little standoffish a little bit to a certain size of the, um, table because she don't fuck with Ashley right now. And... You know, um, they going through the scents and it didn't really seem as if everyone was thoroughly enjoying the what they were smelling. But we're going to get past that. Robin had asked Giselle, is it me or did Monique seem like she was a little chill? You know, like she gave a little chilly reception and all that stuff. You know, and Robin, you know, well, Giselle said, I mean, it do feel chilly up in here, whatever, but... They all thinking that everything is all good because they had a good time at Neiman Collins, you know. And so at this point, um, when Ashley and Candace go to the bathroom, Robin and, or no, Giselle asked Monique, is she okay? And she was like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm just, you know, detoxing energy. They were like, where that come from? She was like, you know, I, I, I'm going to talk to Ashley about it, okay? That's all that I need to do. I don't need to make a big scene and talk about it at the table. I was just going to take her to the side and talk to her about it. And, you know, they was like, well, I thought everything was cool in Neiman Collins. What happened? We was at the hot tub. We was having fun. We was doing all this stuff. And she was like, you know, well, Sharice came in and said it was the insinuation about her being drunk and driving and things of that such. She really wasn't here for that. And then later on, it was like, you know, and Sharice put it out there because they did say earlier that she had threw up at the hot tub because she was drunk. And then Sharice said the only time she wasn't really drinking was in the hot tub. She was only smoking a cigar. And and Monique said, yeah, I didn't drink there because um, Sharice had knocked over her glass and she inhaled the cigar smoke too much, okay? And that's what made her throw up because when you smoke cigars, you're not really supposed to inhale like that. And so, um, they was like, cause they, they didn't know that that's what happens sometimes because they don't smoke cigars. So, they was like, oh, okay. And I do agree with Giselle when she said, see... Monique is not taking the advice that she gave Candace. You're supposed to be transparent with the shit. If you have an issue, do that issue right then and there. Don't let that shit fester until the next day until you think about it and all this shit. But I guess it's probably because she was drunk, but I do agree with Giselle. She should have handled that shit right then and there. But maybe because she was drunk and she finally let that shit settle in and it hit her and like... This bitch really was just, um, you know, spreading this shit around. But I do agree with Giselle. She should have handled it right then and there when it happened. Didn't let this shit fester and build up in you or whatever. And, of course, she was like, I was going to take, um, you know, Ash to another table or do something else. Giselle was like, don't do that shit, bitch. You know, you got to be transparent. We at the table now. Just talk to the table. I don't want to do all that. I said Giselle is just being messy as fuck and nosy as hell. Okay? And part of me is here for it and part of me ain't. Okay? That's... That's, that's how I felt because, I mean, they're going to put it out there anyway. But, um yeah, I do feel like I think we can all agree that if Monique had that big of an issue, she should have been said something. I don't understand why they just sit there and let stuff fester in the first place until it gets to you to the point where, you know, you can't stand to see that person or whatever the fuck. But I guess it makes for good TV. And then Ashley come back and they was like, what's going on? Talking about you. She needs to address something with you. I said, God damn, Giselle. Fuck. I'm team Monique all day, okay, because this shit is getting fucking ridiculous, and at this point, you know, Monique addressed her concerns, and I, at this point, yes, Monique should have been said something about it to Ashley, but I do blame Giselle, because Giselle wanted to be nosy, she wanted some mess to happen, because if she didn't, she would have left it alone and let Monique go ahead and handle that situation on her own and not bring it to the table. She wanted a blow up to happen, she wanted some mess to happen, some drama to happen at Karen's event, and it was so fucking pathetic and sad because not only it wasn't just them group of girls that was there. Karen had other women there too. So now y'all having this big blow up at the table. Ashley not understanding where um 
why Monique would be upset and in her feelings. She was like, you, you, you ruin, trying to ruin my reputation when you say stuff like that. You coming at me trying to say I had four martinis and then I was driving and trying to imply that I was drunk driving and shit like that. And that's why I got into my car accident. But then you had four or five beers that you admitted to having and you drove home too. So what you trying to say about you? Ashley going to say something. Well, I wasn't drunk. I didn't get into no car accident. That's the difference. And I'm like, see, when you say little smart shit like that, that's bound to get your ass popped. Ashley all right you don't understand that you were being fake concerned if you were really fucking concerned about her you would have came to her and told her you're concerned okay you would not went amongst the whole group to this person then this person then this person and then this person and telling them how oh she had five drinks she had four drinks she had three drinks and then it gets back to the person that you're talking about of course they're going to be in their feelings about that but like we all said Monique should have been handled that but um you know they going back and forth and she was like you doing all this stuff like unlike you I got stuff to lose like you only got an allowance to lose or whatever a monthly allowance to lose and Giselle was like wait a minute why you go there who says that all this stuff Karen said we're gonna shut this shit down okay even the little scent lady was like uh-uh please we gotta stop we gotta stop they was like get security okay tell them that this event is over y'all go so they get out and they walking down the street Sharice and um you know uh Monique talking and she was like, you trying to ruin my reputation. You trying to do this and you trying to do that. And, um, Giselle and Robin were coming up and they overheard what Monique was saying. And here go Robin ruin her business, her reputation. Girl, shut up. I'm like, bitch, see, you are the fakest motherfucker in this group. You one of the fakest bitch in this group, Robin. Okay. You come in and you fake concern about Monique. You claiming that, oh, why is this chilly uh, reception that I'm getting from her? What's going on? I hope everything is okay. I'm just concerned about you and your drinking. Is everything okay with you and all this stuff? This is what you've been saying in Neiman Colin. This is what you said at the table. And then when you and Ash, uh, Monique get into it, you talking about something, I don't care. I do not care because, you know, she said you was trying to get on me talking about drinking a bottle of wine and in a car and all this shit. And then, you know, you trying to say you don't care care well if you don't care you wouldn't ask okay so why are you being fake as fuck and then Ashley you know you still not understanding and Monique had to say so the fuck what if I drink a bottle of wine on vacation my husband ain't here my kids ain't here I'm finna fucking enjoy myself the fuck and then at that point Robin was saying some shit you know they was going back and forth and she was like some shut up shut up that's what Robin's favorite thing is to say shut up shut up shut up bitch Robin you ain't nobody to be talking about nobody okay or to be coming at nobody she gonna tell um Monique said, come say that in my face. Come say shut up in my face. See, the hood in Monique came out, and for a split second, I just remembered that she is from the hood. Like, she didn't grow up with the money like that, okay? She came into that shit, bitch, and became bougie as fuck. That bitch thing went the fuck off, and she was like, I choke your ass out with this umbrella. I said, you better go ahead and do it. I do have to give Robin her props, though, because Robin didn't back down either. She stepped right the fuck up, and I said, okay, this going to be a fucking equal fight. This going to be an equal match, okay? Because I can't stay in a match, a fight between a scary bitch and a bitch that's ready to go ahead and get it in. You know what I'm saying? So we'll see how next we go. Y'all tell me how y'all like this episode, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.